And now, National Geographic on assignment. Hello, I'm Tom Chapin, and this is On Assignment. The stories we bring you are shot by some of the best filmmakers in the world. Tonight, we'll meet a filmmaker with an unusually inventive mind who has put new motion into motion pictures. His name is Garrett Brown, and he'll show you that what goes on behind the camera can be as intriguing as the action in front of the lens. Actor Dustin Hoffman running through the congested streets of Midtown Manhattan. A deceptively simple action to film. And yet this scene from Marathon Man was impossible to produce only a few years ago. It was the invention of a Philadelphia cameraman named Garrett Brown that would make such imagery possible. His dream was to move a camera with complete freedom and control. The result would be a startling fusion of mechanical and electronic components, and it would revolutionize the way movies are made. Garrett Brown belongs to a special breed of movie pioneers. Since the beginning, they have experimented with all kinds of devices to bring their vision to the screen. They adapted and put together the most unlikely combination of things to give form to their ideas. And this they did with the characteristic abandon of men possessed. In their quest for the mobile camera, the cameraman was pushed, pulled, and driven on every conceivable type of conveyance. With the advent of talkies, cameras became bulkier and dollies, the four-wheeled platforms on which they were moved, evolved into leviathans weighing hundreds of pounds. Although these innovations were helpful in moving the camera smoothly, the cameraman was severely restricted in following the action of his subjects. In the 1960s, lightweight sound cameras offered greater mobility and fostered a new style of documentary filming known as cinema verite. The images, however, could not compare with the fluid results produced by a dolly. Garrett Brown wanted the best of both worlds. I was schlepping around an 800-pound camera dolly, and I wanted to make handheld shooting better. I liked shooting handheld, but I didn't like the way it looked. I was never crazy about cinema verite or that whole game that we sort of foisted on the public because there was no alternative. And the heart of things like this, I think, is wanting something that doesn't exist. In the beginning, I went down to Canal Street, New York, and I bought aluminum. And I made this. The camera sits here, your hand holds here, and there's just a couple of weights top and bottom. And it's amazing how well this works. But of course, when you try and tilt up, the lens rises. That annoyed me, so I thought, well, maybe I can make it like a a boom, a, a crane, so that it's a parallelogram. So that started a three-month effort to make this ridiculous object. Now, lo and behold, it booms up and down, and the camera stays parallel, but of course now it won't pan and tilt independently, so... This prototype allowed Garrett to produce remarkable images, but the entire system weighed nearly 70 pounds. The quest for the mobile camera would require yet another approach. And I went back into the original drawings, went into a motel for a week and sort of hung out and ran around with broomsticks scaring the maids and I decided to try one which was much simpler. And this is the first version that had a, an arm type suspension. The arm suspension system proved to be the key to Garrett's first successful prototype. This twilight scene provided a glimpse of the awesome potential of his invention. To refine it further, Garrett would collaborate with Cinema Products, a film equipment company in Los Angeles. The improved prototype would soon be used on a feature film called Bound for Glory. As I bring this thing out, it looks to me amazingly crude, and I see people on the crew looking at this and saying, the kid has some kind of gadget, you know? In a true test of his gadget, Garrett was lowered 30 feet by crane to follow actor David Carradine through a maze of props and people.
never before was a cameraman able to move around his subject with such a fluid intimacy. It was the beginning of a new era in filmmaking. Garrett's invention, eventually to be called the Steadicam, allowed the cameraman total mobility through an ingenious combination of mechanics and electronics. A video monitor served as the operator's viewfinder. A body harness now absorbed the weight of the system. A flexible arm acted as both a support and shock absorber for the camera. At last, the cameraman could be as mobile as his subjects and create images that seemed to float in midair. In 1978, Garrett Brown would receive the Academy Award for technical achievement. In 1980, a workshop was created in Rockport, Maine to promote the use of Steadicam. Camera operators from all over the world come for an intensive five days to learn the basics of this demanding instrument. Those motions, particularly if your motion is out of period, if I was... Mastery of the Steadicam is a skill that few have achieved. It is not unlike learning to play the violin. The basics may take only a few lessons. Becoming a virtuoso, however, requires years of commitment. Comes down. It's a dance. You have to understand, you're talking ballet here, right? The actor comes up like this, so he, the cameraman has a semi-raking to the rear look. There are only 400 Steadicam operators in the world. Of these, only 30 are acknowledged masters. One of them is Ted well, Churchill. This doesn't have a ground glass. What we're going to do is we're going to set... He was a handheld documentary cameraman before he became totally immersed in steady cam photography. Another is Canadian Bob Crone, who's been involved in the production of documentaries, commercials, and feature films for the past 30 years. I had the fun of being at the Cinema Products Factory when Garrett was out there 10 years ago prototyping the steady cam, And I knew then I wanted it. But I got to know Garrett, and as I've met him and worked with him on and off over the years, I found that coming back and being with him, I see in him each time more new growth. The man never seems to quit having an expansion that he shares with you, and I find it very inspiring to be around Garrett Brown. Teaching yeah. study cam is great fun for me, uh, partly because I always learn something. I think we're still figuring out how to do it. Game collapses. Okay, now we're comfortable. We're enjoying it. We're shooting to the rear. We're not paying any attention where we're going. This thing is still in its infancy. I I'd hes I'd hesitate to predict where it all can go. I'm sure we'll get better and better at it. You see why you shouldn't do that at home, because it scares the shit out of you. From my own standpoint, it's allowed me to make shots that I couldn't otherwise make. No way to do shots that go from one floor to another or up and over obstacles or through doorways. We're chasing this poor, unfortunate guy right here. Nothing against dollies. I mean, I think they'd be very useful for delivering, for instance, groceries or canapes at one old-fashioned party, but for moving very a camera quick, around, I'm infatuated with this thing. It is wonderful. You ended up here with a garbage frame. Because you you no can idea. be a great deal more sensitive to a lens placement that a, gives you the image you want nice at each second, one flowing into another. Moving, or for something that, okay, I'm rolling. Start my pan. There he is. I don't want too much left to frame because he's headed right. Leave him room in the frame. To a lot of it is feel, you know. Once you get beyond the technicalities of operating, where you go is driven by the picture. When Garrett Brown wields the Steadicam, he elevates it to an art form all its own. In Stanley Kubrick's film, The Shining, the camera not only follows the action, it creates it. In the 1970s, Garrett Brown had another vision, a robot camera. 
unattached to any operator and yet able to film virtually any angle from inches off the ground to hundreds of feet in the air. This vision led to Skycam. As in his previous invention, it is a sophisticated melange of mechanics and electronics. The camera is suspended and transported on four wires. These are fed from motorized winches, which are controlled by a central computer. The camera's images are transmitted through the world's smallest microwave transmitter. With Steadicam, Garrett was able to make the camera see more like a human being. With Skycam, the camera sees as we have never seen before. Skycam can move over 20 miles per hour and yet maintain the graceful steadiness that has become the hallmark of Garrett's inventions. Over, Steve. Hey, score out, score out. All right, Tommy, we'll try to work a hero again and then go to six, and then I'll have you stay with the ball. Come on, Jim. I mean, all of life is, inventing anyway, is linear. You, you don't start right out doing the turbo Carrara just because somebody has invented the wheel. It takes you a while. You sort of build on what, you know, what civilization has done. Garrett Brown, former folk singer, car salesman, science fiction writer, now cameraman and inventor. His creations have allowed him to give form to his vision. In the process, he has enriched ours. 30 feet. 